Hey everybody, happy Friday. I'm Bette Hockberger, CPA, CGMA, and we have a special Finance Friday for you today. We're gonna change things up a little bit and we're gonna do an SBA roundup because there's been a lot going on with the SBA in case you haven't been paying attention. Um, I think I spoke about this in another video, but in case you didn't hear, they extended the PPP deadlines all the way out to uh, May, right? So if you were thinking about putting in a PPP application and you haven't done it yet, you have a lot more time. So go ahead, get that application in. You can do round one, round two, both of them, one of them, whatever you need, whatever you can get your hands on, <laughs> go get an SB, um, a PPP loan from the SBA. It's gonna be a lot of alphabet soup going on today. Um, so the first uh, thing of the SBA roundup we're gonna talk about is the oh looks like it's not working love it when you have the technical difficulties uh, there we go the targeted eidl advance Whew, what is that so that you might remember last year when kind of all the stimulus things not the individual the business stimulus started coming out the ppp eidl all that stuff we're supposed to be able to get a $10,000 grant just for kind of existing more or less. If you had a business, just put in an application, didn't matter where you were, how shut down you were, how open you were, nothing. I mean, everyone at the time was shut down, but the SBA was supposed to give everyone a $10,000 grant just to keep you afloat while the country kind of went into lockdown. Well, if you went and put in an application for that, you might know that you probably didn't get a $10,000 grant unless you had more than 10, 10 or more employees because the SBA decided, even though it wasn't written this way, that they were only going to give you $1,000 per employee, which I know personally made me very upset because I didn't have that many employees, but now we've got this EIDL targeted advanced grant. So what this is supposed to do is if you put in for that grant previously and you did not get that full 10,000, you should be able to now get some amount, maybe up to that 10,000, right? You had to previously apply for this. And if you applied and you found out like they ran out of money, uh, you're still kind of in the pot for this one. So there are some new qualifications though. So now, uh, in addition to having put in that application, you have to be located in a low income community which there is a map. If you kind of Google around for it or go to the SBA website, you can find the map. I believe it's based on uh, census data, more or less. Uh, but you have to be in a low income community, have 300 or fewer employees, and had a greater than 30% reduction in revenue from one time period to another. I wanna say it's like a two month period, something like that. I'm sorry, I don't remember off the top of my head. And additionally, if you're in a really uh, hard hit, low income community and you have less than 10 employees, you can get an additional $5,000. It's a new tier, didn't exist before. This is on top of the 10,000, uh, but you have to have a greater than 50% reduction in revenue for the time period they're looking at. So now, how do you get this? You don't put in a new application. The EIDL, uh, or the SBA is going to contact you if you already have an EIDL grant. Uh, they're gonna send you an email, they're gonna invite you to go to a website, you have to give them a bunch of information. Like for example, you need the monthly gross revenue from January 19 through the most recent month. So if you get that email now, you're gonna have to do January 2019 all the way through March. You know, obviously if you get this message in May, you'll need it through April. And if you already got it, you did it already. <laughs> uh, I know when I did mine, they asked me for um, some other information, kind of your generic stuff. They wanna make sure that you're like not a lobbyist, that you're not a congressperson, all kinds of kooky stuff that the SBA has thrown in there. Um, oh, and the, the other cool thing is kind of like the EIDL grants before, this is not gonna affect your PPP loan forgiveness, right? Initially, they said the EIDL was going to lower your forgiveness and then back in December, when they enacted that latest 
uh, I'm sorry, I don't even remember what the name of that bill was, but they said specifically, no, EIDL grants, and that includes this new, this new version, are not going to affect your PPP loan forgiveness. So two separate things here. Hopefully, if you didn't get the full 10,000, you'll be able to get more this time. And then next on our list is the EIDL loan limit increase. So if you put in for the EIDL loan, this is different from a PPP loan and it's different from the EIDL grant, right? This was a, a, a kind of normal loan. EIDL loans are actually not new. It wasn't newly created to deal with COVID. These are uh, emergency disaster loans. So if you get hit with a hurricane, a tornado, you know, some kind of real emergency disaster, it's so that the SBA can help you kind of get your business back up and running. So as of April 6th, which is just this week, there's now a loan limit increase. It went from a maximum of 150,000 all the way up to half a million, $500,000. And once again, you don't need to apply for this new amount the SBA is going to contact you. They're going to send you an email and say, hey, you know, you've got this loan. We are um, allowing you to request additional funds if you want to. Um, in the specific way you had to do it was you had to respond uh, with an email to a specific address with a specific subject line. And they wanted information like your EIDL loan application number, the loan number, uh, your name, address, some, you know, some of that basic stuff so they could identify you. Uh, I don't totally know how they're going to decide who gets it. If they're just going to say, all right, if you ask for it, you get it. Who knows? A lot of this stuff is kind of first come first serve. So if you think you might want additional, um, the ideal loan money, when you get that email, respond right away. Uh, they're also extending the deferment, right? It, at first it was, I think it was six months that they gave you before you had to start repaying and now it's uh, being pushed out 24 months after the date of your loan if you got it back in 2000, right? So they're pushing out two years out to 2022. And if you're still putting in applications right now, if you get a loan granted in 2021, you're going to get 18 months. So they're really, you know, stretching that out. The economy and a lot of businesses have not come back the way I think they were hoping a year ago. So this is going to really... Uh, help those businesses out that need this this loan to keep going. Uh, and it's an unsecured personal guarantee for loan amounts over 200,000 from anyone who owns more than 20%. So what does that mean? It's actually really cool because usually the SBA does not do uh, no, they don't usually say like you don't need a personal guarantee. So here they are and saying you need a personal guarantee, but it's not secured. Meaning, you, you know, you're not having a put up collateral. You don't have to put up any assets to secure that. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and for any loan that's under 500,000, there's no real estate collateral required at all. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, things that didn't change about the loan, 30 year maturity. Woof, long time. I kind of hope I'm not still in business in 30 years, but who knows, you know, for some people that could be great. Um, the interest rates are super low. 3.75 for a small business. And the small business definition includes sole proprietors, independent contractors, you know, so just if you're like a one man shop there, it's fine, you can still get these loans. And non not for profits get a special even lower rate, 2.75%. So if you need more EIDL loan, if you want it, when you get that email, go get it. And last but not least, the somewhat disastrous shuttered venue operator grant. Now this is brand brand new. This uh, was created in that bill back in uh, December and this is supposed to help uh, those organizations in the performing arts and kind of related uh, industries because they've really been hit hard and they've probably been hit worse than a lot of other industries. Uh, it's a $16.25 billion program. Oh my God, that's so much money. <laughs> but, you know, the SBA, still a little dysfunctional. So this has been kind of supposed to be taking applications uh, for a couple months now. They were finally supposed to start Thursday, April 8th, which if you're watching this live, was yesterday. And within a couple of hours, they had to shut it down because of technical difficulties. <laughs> 
I don't know. Like, is it that hard to build a website? Uh, I don't know. I feel like people do this all the time and they just don't find uh, good people to make government websites. I don't know. Kind of remember Obamacare when that first came out? I don't remember that. It was kind of a disaster also. So here's another government disaster, but it's well intended because there's $16.25 billion available in the Shuttered Venue Operator Grant Program. Now, who's eligible for this? Live venue operators or promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organizations, um, some museum operators, zoos and aquariums, they have some certain criteria they have to meet, motion picture theater operators, AKA movie theaters, uh, talent representatives, um, and then there's a couple other stipulations. You have to have been in operation as of February 29th, 2020. So you had to be in business already last year before all the COVID shutdowns. Um, and if you're getting a PPP loan or you received one after this new bill was enacted on December 27th, 2020, your um, shuttered venue grant is gonna be re reduced by the PPP loan amount. So they're not exclu mutually exclusive. You can go get that PPP if it applies to you. You can also get the shuttered venue if it applies to you. They're just gonna reduce it a little bit. How much is this for? Well, it's for 45% of your 2019 gross earned revenue or $10 million, whichever is less. So for a lot of small organizations, I'm actually part of one, I'm the treasurer of a theatrical group, we got walloped by COVID shutdowns. So for us, you know, we're fingers crossed, hoping to get in there and uh, get back a lot of the, the funds that we lost as a result. Uh, and the way they're doing it, it's a little complex. There's a three tiered priority funding system of some sort that they came up with. And then after those three rounds, there's a supplemental round if there's any money left. Uh, it's really convoluted, it's based on percentages and some other stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's a big application. I'm not gonna lie. If you're thinking about getting this, just be prepared to do a lot of paperwork. Um, you know, that, that nonprofit I was talking about that I'm on, we, <laughs> we have been working on that paperwork for a long time for like weeks, getting financial records together, tax returns, like all kinds of policies, procedures, like lots of things that they want to put in this application. So it's not easy. Uh, you know, don't think like it's gonna take you two seconds. It's gonna take a few hours, hours. One of the most complicated SBA uh, applications that I have seen or dealt with. It's really a little bit intense. So that's your um, shuttered venue. Oh, one other thing, you're not getting your money right away if you apply for this. They said uh, at best you're getting it later in April, hopefully. I mean, I guess that depends if they get the uh, application back up and running. Ooh, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen there? So that's it for this Finance Friday. That was your SBA Roundup. I'm gonna keep you informed as best I can on the things going on. And if you have any questions, comments, any opinions on anything here, feel free to drop a message in the comments. We'll try to respond as quickly as possible. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.